fishing by yourself like what I do most of the time. I am my own boss. I've nobody to be shouting at me or you know looking to see if I'm working. That reef is important not only culturally, but it really, really constitutes a, a critical part of our national economy. You know, just like everybody else pretty much, is by make a living of uh, tourism. The tourists, they like to go out there and visit and they like to see the fish, they like to swim in the seas and they enjoy it. It's what Belize is famous for. We're not a big country, we're not famous for a lot, but we are famous for that reef. The reef is all about life. I mean, it's supporting everything in Belize from the economy and our tourist future. There are still viable fishing communities and people maintaining their traditions. It's like the culture and the languages and the reef is all part of that. It's part of our national patrimony. I have watched migrations of fish that migrate to the reef from the lagoon changes over time. Some species that used to migrate, I don't even see them again. The good, beautiful coral that we used to have along the coastline, they're not there anymore. They're dead, they're gone. And, and that's starting to move farther out. We get fishes and lobsters and so, but not like before. We need, we need the reef. If without it, we don't have no protection, no economy, no nothing. And it is dying, yes. All those corals are dead right now. They don't have that pink, beautiful color anymore. They are all full of scum. I don't think we have properly taken stock of what the cumulative impacts are. How cutting down all the mangroves and the dredging have really affected the integrity of the reef. The mangroves have been cut down daily. Huge dredging in the lagoon. They're cutting down the swamps the, uh, the mangroves and reclaiming land. And it's a terrible thing. Well, the mangrove for me, that's a disaster. Seems like you will get less into the, to go to, to build land anywhere. At the end of the day, there's not much control that we have over climate and natural disasters. Unregulated coastal development was a number one threat to the reef. That's the one that has exploded, really, over the last five years. One of the biggest embarrassments that we have faced in Belize is lack of planning. When it's driven by just each individual developer finding their piece of land and trying to build their dream, that doesn't necessarily give us the, you know, the big picture of what we want for development in Belize. <laughs> Tourism accounts for about 27% of our GDP. It can have a very drastic impact on why people come to Belize or whether the numbers will keep coming as they do. The tourists that come here, they come to snorkel and scuba dive. And if that reef ever die, we are in trouble. Mangroves in general are very important for fisheries. You know, it's, it's where we're producing the fish that will then be caught by fishers and eaten by tourists. So it's the whole system, you know, it protects everything for us. But if we destroy these nursery areas, we are reducing the capacity of our, our fishing industry to maintain itself. What will be our story? We had this gift that we allowed to be ruined. UNESCO's declaration putting us on a the blacklist, if you will, to say that you're in crisis mode here. We need to begin to turn things around.
to not be able to guarantee your children and their children a decent life, a respectable life, a life that's not, you know, rooted in poverty, that would be catastrophic. The planning process is, is extremely crucial. There's two types of planning. We can, we can say, let's, let's do some short-term plans and create a beach and sell it tomorrow. Or we can say, let's look at, at where the world is going. Let's just look at where responsible development is going. We know enough to start doing something. The will now needs to come to, to make changes. We are asking the government to consider zoning. And I would wish that something like that would develop, that we have a major coastal plan. A coastal zone plan is going to keep those crucial elements that bring people here intact. The plan is basically going to look at where development should happen, dedicate specific areas for different industries for the best optimal use in that area. Those things may seem anti-development, but in the long run it means that you're creating more value per visitor. If you maintain a mangrove pristine, or you maintain a reef pristine, it has a lot more value than if you dredge and create a beach. It is the future. It is the reason why people will travel. If we can start creating that value through conservation now, I think Belize will be in a very enviable position. We just need to do everything we can to make sure that this patient gets stronger and comes back, because it really is, it's, the reef is sick. The core of our economic development in the future is the natural resources, and we can't take them for granted. Coastal planning is what we need in this country. People in Belize realize that there's a need for it. You know, like, oh, we're going to get to it, we're going to get to it, but we never get to it. We need to prioritize that as much as possible. We plan how we go with it, because we can't develop not without a plan. You have to have a plan. You know, it hurts to see, you know, your, your natural resources being taken advantage of. We want it to be safe, healthy development. We don't want to destroy our swamps or our mangroves or anything like that. It's not just about the money, and it's not just about the tourism or the fish potential. It's that people love the reef.